Hello and welcome to Circular Shift 2020, the annual event of the Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute. We are streaming live from Amsterdam today and are glad that you are joining us virtually from across the world. This is our fourth and last episode of this year's event with a focus on changing behaviors the next generation of purchasers and consumers. At the Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute, we are dedicated to a world where safe materials and products are designed and manufactured to maximize health and well-being for people and the planet. Through our global standard and certification, we enable consumers to recognize safe, circular, and responsibly made products. With changing lifestyles and increasing sustainability awareness across all generations and regions, the positive impact of products starts to gain center stage in purchasing choices. Which role do consumers play in the shift towards a circular future? How can we make it easier for consumers to choose better products? And how can companies tap into circular behavior patterns? We will hear from three pioneers today who not only make the products of tomorrow, but also involve the consumer in the circularity journey. I'm welcoming today Timo Schmidt Eisenhardt, Global President Napapiri, and EMEA Digital Platform for VF. Joe Jidley, founder of the Beauty Kitchen, and Merain Everards, founder and owner of Dopper. Nice to have you with us today, and welcome Timo, Joe, and Merain. Thanks for having me here, Christina. Great to be here. It's great, it's lovely to be here. Great to have you uh, with us today. And let's start uh, by introducing your, your companies. We have a very diverse audience. You also come from different sectors. Timo, could you explain to us uh, what, who Napapiri uh, is uh, and how you approach the topic of uh, sustainability? Absolutely, Christina. Thanks again for having me here. Um, uh, it's a pleasure. Um, it's a big, important topic for us. So I'm representing Napapiri. Uh, you pronounced the name correctly, it's a difficult name. A lot of uh, people struggle with that. And for our fans, our fans simply call us Napa. So as simple as it is. We are a an, an, you know, non-Italian you know, founded brand. And we're an outdoor lifestyle brand in the premium sector. Uh, we're part of a bigger company, DF Corporation, you know, North Face, Vans, Timberland are part of the same group. And we are one of those emerging brands um, that spearhead um, you know, business models and uh, innovation projects within the corporation. And we have been you know, to this topic since 2012, working on developing solutions aimed to reducing you know, the fashion industry's environmental impact. And we know that is huge. Um, and we started giving up fur and down already years back um, and uh, you know, creating in-house you know, solutions to replace like thermal fiber as insulation. But as time you know, went on, we realized that the stakes are higher than that. Um, and we are you know, really collectively you know, um, um, pressed to solve our planets and, um, and pollution, so to speak. So we turned you know, towards um, circularity as, as, as you know, a key element, as a key strategy 
mechanism to shift our industry's role on this planet. So our vision is to pioneer the future, and we do this, this by combining design, sustainability, and innovation as a unique, unique sign proposition. It took us three years to you know, collaborate with various internal, external you know, partners and um, to deliver on one common goal to create a jacket made out of one single material that can be used and recycled forever. The result is the Infinity Jacket. It's the first industry's fully 100% recyclable jacket. But that's only the starting point of a very exciting journey. Thank you, Timo. And we will learn about this journey further in today's conversation. Uh, Joe, who is uh, Beauty Kitchen? Well, Beauty Kitchen um, was co-founded by myself and my husband, Stuart. And we are basically on a mission to create the most effective, natural and sustainable beauty products in the world. So we see small changes that make a big impact, and that includes your beauty routine. So every product in our award-winning range has been designed with sustainability in mind. We have used cradle-to-cradle -cradle principles from, from the very beginning. And although the beauty industry is not known for sustainability and certainly not known for cradle-to-cradle -cradle principles, we really want to change that. And I think the great thing about the beauty industry is that you can have a range of different products to target mass consumers across the world, yet for, depending on, you know, their disposable income or their skin colour or their skin type. So we can reach such a large audience with our products, which means that we get the cradle to cradle principles and circular economy into people's hands for things that they can use on a daily basis. Thank you, Joe. And Marina, who is Dopper? Dopper um, is uh, a water bottle, but a water bottle on a mission. And uh, that's also how it started. Uh, 11 years uh, ago, I was on the beach uh, enjoying the sunset, drinking a nice glass of rosé, seeing the birds calling from the sky and the fishes jumping from the ocean. Um, but when I went up the dunes and looked back, I saw this uh, beach covered in uh, plastic. And uh, a great deal of this plastic was single-use plastic water bottles because a lot of people, of course, you need to hydrate yourself in a hot day. Um, but what I never realized is that all this plastic is actually entering into the ocean instead of that it's being cleaned up by the people itself or by uh, a cleaner. Um, and uh, that day in uh, late September um, 2009, it really struck me. And I was really, really frustrated that I saw that all this plastic is entering the ocean and it's really literally out of sight, out of mind. And then I thought, okay, I need to create awareness about the problem, but not to raise the finger. You're not allowed to use uh, any more single-use plastic, but more persuade people to the solution uh, to use reusable water bottles. And then I initiated a design competition and uh, yeah, this uh, beauty uh, came out. <laughs> more about it later. Yes, more, more about it later in the conversation. Thank you, Marijn. Uh, Timo, you already mentioned uh, the circular series of uh, Napa Piri, and let's uh, dive a little bit deeper into that. So what were the drivers for you to basically come out with the circular series and to have it uh, cradle to cradle certified at the gold level? Mm. No, absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, think, I mean, first of all, you know, even on a personal level, it's our duty, if you ask about the drivers, we owe that to our planet, we owe that to ourselves, we owe that to mankind to take care about the planet we live on. So that is, of course, you know, first of all, foremost, the, the key driver. Um, and then, of course, the second driver for an upper period is, you know, our purpose, pioneering the future, which, you know, probably fits, you know, better now than ever before into today's environment we're living in. Um, and, and as I said before, you know, we, we, we have written on our flag to create a more sustainable you know, future for the industry and, and create you know, a more sustainable way of doing business. The circular model really has been a, a very powerful model, we believe, to, to exactly do that, to really you know, eliminate as possible all waste and all additional raw material use and really going all in. And the credit uh, trader gold certificate, you know, that process, that standard, you know, we believe is a very good standard at this point in time to demonstrate that and make, you know, things comparable, equal within the industry and beyond the industries. 
And, and as I mentioned, we got the, the gold and, and C2C certificate for that jacket. It has been one jacket for now. We go now into a circular series you know, for the next season. So as I said, a very, very exciting start of a, of a journey and um, uh, uh, more to come on that. That's great. And what makes the circular series so special or so innovative for the industry? Yeah. I mean, if you, if you think back, the, 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 the concept, you know, in the end, looking back is super simple. And that's often the case in these things that in the end, the simple solution is the best one, but it takes you some time to really get there. Um, the, the concept has been, you know, looking back, make, make a jacket entirely, you know, only from one material right? that could be easily recycled. That's it. Pretty simple, straightforward. And, but at first, you know, we, we, we had to go through some journey to, to, to get us there, so to speak, because first we followed a more traditional recycling idea, you know, dissembling a jacket into the, you know, singular pieces, the metal, the plastic, the nylon, you know, the different pieces to really, you know, disassemble that and then recycle, you know, in, in these different, you know, you know, areas, different boxes, so to speak. But, you know, from an economic viability, you know, that didn't make sense. This, this, but this we, we found out as we walked, you know, as a company, as a team through the process. So instead of that, then we, we started, you know, at the end from, from the raw material, from the material itself. And so we, we um, you know, um, the research basically, you know, what is that one material that would allow to really do recycling on the same level without losing any quality, you know, for forever, so to speak. And that is nylon six, uh, which was the solution we came up with, which which exactly gives that. The problem we faced is that um, a jacket is a rather complicated product. It has you know numerous elements. It's, it's a complicated make with various pieces and normally different materials. So if you think about the zippers, you know, the buttons, the insulation, the padding, and they, they did not exist in nylon six. So a key part of the process has been to develop all these different pieces out of this one material. Don't forget, this was the goal, one single material all the way through. And, um, you know, with, of course, a skilled internal team, lots of external partners and suppliers, and we exactly could achieve that. You know, each of the 25 components, one by one, is now made out of nylon six, truly groundbreaking. And uh, we, we believe, and that again, got the, the credible credit gold certificate, you know, and that is now possible to recycle, you know, on the same level, you know, for forever. So that's, uh, that's really groundbreaking and, and truly the, the, the only one in the industry right now. Well, thank you, Timo, for sharing that. It's really quite some collaborative innovation that was uh, that was uh, taking place there. Um, let's turn to the to the beauty business, to to the cosmetics industry. And Joe, what uh, motivated the setup of your beauty company, and how do cradle to cradle principles uh, fit uh, into your philosophy? Yeah, so um, I am an analytical chemist, but my professional background is working for, you know, large blue chips in, in human resources. So when it came to beauty products, I'm a, a beauty junkie. I, I love beauty products. I love the industry as a whole. I love the fact that it gives you confidence and freedom to do whatever you want. And it's very related to fashion as well. Um, so when Stuart and I were thinking, what, what do we want to disrupt? Where do we want to start in terms of our business we wanted to build a sustainability company so we targeted the beauty industry first because it's not known as an industry for being sustainable and um, I think it has one of the biggest single-use um, plastics not only single-use but, but but plastic that generally cannot be recycled because it's double-walled and it's too complicated so there was lots of areas that we thought actually not just from a packaging perspective but from a formulation perspective as well we can actually look at using cradle to cradle principles and develop our products from the beginning with that in mind, rather than trying to retrofit, which is what a lot of organisations do. Now, we've obviously been on a, a journey where when we first started, we were very small. It was just me. Um, and we had to use, you know, different types of packaging and different types of formulations. What's happened over the period of about four years is that we 
are now in a place where we have formulations that truly work, not just from an efficacy perspective, but work from a cradle to cradle principle perspective. But then we have really targeted the packaging side of things. And the way that we've done that is we've created what's called our return refill repeat program. So all of our packaging is in is reusable. And what happens when a customer finishes their product, they send their empties back to us and we do that through a network of retailers but we also do that through the postal system as well um, to be able to get those empties back and we've created this a gold standard of washing the bottles and other packaging to be able to be refilled to be able to be reused and, and sold to the customer again. So we keep the packaging in that circular loop for a, actually a very long time. And we've been fortunate that we've had a lot of different support from not just cradle to cradle, but other businesses that have gone through that process. And also um, here in the UK in terms of um, other uh, beauty entrepreneurs, there is a lot to do within the beauty industry. And I think that's why I fit quite nice into it because I really like to be busy and I like to be challenged. And and I also like to do things that other people haven't done. So, um, but what I like to do is I like to share that knowledge. And, and that's really, for me, the crux when it comes to cradle to cradle. It's not just about creating these, you know, beautiful, gorgeous products that, that consumers can use and get the idea of cradle to cradle. It's then sharing it on these sorts of platforms and other platforms to try and generate that interest with other companies. Not They don't have to be in the same industry to get them to think, well, what is it that we could do by choosing some of those principles that will not only create better products, but will actually future-proof your business? And that, for me, is just an exciting space to be in. Thanks, uh, Joe, and great that you're sharing uh, with us here, here today. And could you maybe also give a little bit more insights how you go about product development, innovation at Beauty Kitchen? You have a very uh, customer-centric lens also, as you say. How does this uh, happen in, in practice at your company? Yeah, well, the, the great thing is, um, because I love beauty products, I'm the first customer, which is great. Um, but we have um, lots of interest from our consumer base, people that have been early adopters into the sustainability message, that we get um, real-time feedback. We have what's called um, our beauty club. And that basically means that the customer can tell us direct what it is that they're looking for, and we can put that into our NPD process. The great thing thing about being a sort of small but growing business is the way that we approach new product development is very different from the traditional way that you would do it in a much larger organization because we're not focused just on short-term pro profit we are focused on that long-term strategy and um, we're also a b corp certified business which i know you know a lot of the audience will either know about or be themselves and what that does is it means that we focus not just on the commercials, but we focus on the human element and we focus on the environment. And what that really does is it really helps us to make decisions with cradle to cradle in the circular economy at a very, very early stage. And it means that if it doesn't hit those marks to begin with, it will never be a beauty kitchen product in the first place. Um, and that for me has really helped keep our, our innovation pipeline, you know, ahead of the curve, but it's also given other beauty brands and other indie brands the opportunity to, to see what is possible um, and we can help and support them as well. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Marina, over, over to you. Could you tell us a little bit, little bit more what sparked the setup of your business and why did you choose a water bottle? Yeah, it's nice that Joe is making a commercial at the same time uh, for Dopper. <laughs> so I don't have to lift the bottle the whole time. Thank you, Joe. Um, no, um, I, what I already said, it started on the beach uh, that day. Um, that was the first part that I thought, okay, we need to make a, a change. But um, I didn't know what. I felt frustrated in this big world with this big problem and how to solve it. And then I really started to look around me how people are using, uh, especially mineral water bottles. And I really figured, and uh, in interviews also with people, they said proudly that they are refilling their mineral water bottle. And then I thought, okay, but why are you having then, uh, why are you not changing to a, to a sustainable water bottle? 
yeah, because they start to stink, they break, they leak. Um, okay, that's beautiful information. I took it with me. But the most important thing is that people really wanted to carry uh, water with them all the time. So um, between uh, the airports and, uh, and Central Station Amsterdam, you will dry out, of course, if you don't have a, a plastic water bottle with you or water with you. So I figured that was the most important thing. I've been a, a smoker before. I smoked a lot uh, of uh, cigarettes and I made my own uh, cigarettes. And I really saw that actually this bottle is a sort of habit what you have with, with you. So uh, with the ribbles on the sides, uh, with uh, the lid which you can take off and, uh, and put it on, um, it's uh, like you, it's part of you. So you always have it's part of your identity. So some people, they really showed it to buy mineral water from Fiji or from Norway or from the Alps. Um, so I thought, okay, it's part of the image. So it's they're filling it up with tap water, but they have the conscious feeling of water of Fiji or wherever it comes from, and they have something in their hands. So I thought that's what uh, the question was. Uh, when we have a new design bottle, does it have this feature? So um, we do have some uh, ribbles uh, here on the side, so it feels the same sensation uh, as uh, as a normal water bottle, uh, just a plastic water bottle. Um, we have a 2.2 uh, diameter of uh, the bottle, so we have an excellent flow of water into our mouth. Um, and uh, as uh, uh, we also have a very nice, uh, beautiful cup, so you can uh, do the water and the wine uh, maybe uh, together. Uh, but it also gives the feature to uh, to clean it very, uh, very well. So um, I knew it had to be something which sparks, not only for me, but also for others. And then uh, this is the first original color, but we have uh, like 15 different colors uh, and also different uh, models and uh, materials. So we also use steel, uh, we also use uh, glass. Um, so there is no more excuses for the people who had a mineral water before. Uh, <laughs> we have it all. Great. Marijn, and you showed uh, the bottle. So since, the, since actually this year, your entire bottle range is Cradle to Cradle certified. Yeah. So could you speak yeah. a little bit uh, to the experience uh, with the certification and to the Cradle to Cradle certified journey? Yeah. Um, it uh, started with me, uh, the phrase was Dopper, the perfect bottle for tap water. And it was not only meant for the consumer that is a perfect bottle, but it meant also for me and now internally for the whole crew, is that the bottle should be always perfect. So not only looking beautiful, but it should have the perfect materials, the perfect size, um, um, the perfect labor. So uh, where it's made and how it's made, uh, the energy, what we use. So all this together should be on the perfect level. Um, the beautiful thing about cradle to cradle is you can't, uh, yeah, of course you can go for gold or platinum at once, but I like uh, the way that you can make a journey. So we started with uh, bronze uh, with this, and now this is uh, gold. Um, but on the steel, we're at the moment at bronze, we just started with this one, um, that you can make a journey in your materials. So you can always strive for better. And uh, that's what I really like about the journey with um with Cradle to Cradle. And what's also uh, good, it's uh, for us a tool internally to make a better bottle uh, and to test ourselves and not we are only telling the truth. Uh, there's a certification telling this, so this helps externally to uh, tell to the consumer that this is a really reliable product. Not we are saying it, Cradle to Cradle is saying, here's the certification. And it really helps uh, us to uh, to spread the word all over the, yeah, over the, over the world. In, uh, in that sense. And yeah, we are very proud that the whole portfolio is now cradle to cradle certified because yeah, and um, we are really proud of, uh, of doing, of having this. Yeah. Right. And it actually it started, I said the perfect bottle for tap water, sorry to add this. It's um, taking the full responsibility as if you put something on the world, this is our responsibility. It's not the problem of a consumer. We as cons uh, producers, we should take the responsibility and then it should not uh, interfere in the uh, consciousness or awareness of the customer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Marai. Um, Timo, we are coming back to the gold certified jacket of uh, Napa Piri and the circular series. And uh, a lot of uh, development went into this, of course, a lot of innovation. So how do you bring a product like that best to the market? And how are you involving the consumer in the circularity journey and in the circularity experience? Yeah, I mean, before speaking about the, the product cycle, right, I think we spend a bit more time on that later, but I mean, the consumer, both Joe and Marijn spoke about the consumer, 
think. In the end, the consumer is, is at the center of everything we do. The consumer decides and we listen to the consumer to their needs. And being in the, in the fashion business, now I spoke about design, sustainability, innovation, right? Innovation, sustainability clearly is covered, but the design piece, I mean, the fashion piece is for us, of course, a critical consumer need as well. The, the styles need to look nice and need to make you look nice. And the features keep you warm, keep you dry is an absolute need if you do something in apparel or in footwear in that case. And so that's, of course, our additional you know, challenge, you know, because what we realized over the last years as well is, you know, any sustainable recycled product not looking nice is, is not going to fly. So the consumer indeed, you know, is, is deciding for that. The additional benefit, once you manage to make a sustainable product looking nice, then, of course, that, that, that benefit, you know, could be enormous because you just give this good feeling of well, well-being, you know, with, with, for the consumers as well. But of course, we had, you know, in that, in that, um, um, you know, single jacket first, now into the circular series, which is taking more and more space within the total line. Of course, rethink the consumer journey, right? Um, so in that case, of course, we, we need that product back at some point in time. So we we allow now we have a whole you know take back program installed. It's a dedicated community which we're engaging with through marketing and communication, of course, on a regular basis. We're tracking each jacket jacket individually. And uh, basically, in simple, you know, people buy their jackets and they register. They are able to, after two years, for example, bring the jacket back to, to one of our stores and one of the gathering points. And we take, we take, we take that apart, so to speak, into nylon six. And, and that is the, the great thing of, of this, of this credit rental piece of the nylon six. We can make the same, the same jacket basically in a new version out of that same material. And that is, uh, that, is, that is incredible if you think about it. No waste, no additional raw material needed for that. Um, but besides the product cycle, that consumer journey cycle, these two just need to match perfectly on each other and there's no space to deviate. Thank you, Timo. Um, Joe, we, we, leave a, we, we receive a lot of uh, questions uh, typically at the Institute also. How can you best communicate the circularity or the sustainability features of a product uh, to the consumer? So which uh, tips do you have from your experience for effective uh, consumer messaging? So I think what everyone has described recently is the first thing is to design a product that customers want to buy. So I think, you know, that's always the first piece. It's it's finding something that they will definitely want to get into their hands. Um, but what you can make sure you can do from a business perspective behind the scenes is that it fits those cradle to cradle principles. Once the customer has it in their hands, um, as we know, cradle to cradle and sustainability, you know, it's quite complex, it's very detailed. It's not something that just rolls off the tongue in a, in a few words that, that you just get, yeah? And I think you need to try and not do everything at once. So we, sometimes we kind of um, say that we are getting all of our customers onto the cradle to cradle principles by stealth. They don't even know that sometimes it's happening. Um, but the way that we try to then communicate is using the different communication channels that all of us will be using. So whether that is social media, whether that is your direct to consumer, or whether that is actually using the other retail distribution uh, network that you have for your products. Um, one of the ways that we have, have managed to unlock this um, cradle to cradle um, principles is around our return, refill, repeat program, because there's a very big highlight at the moment because of the David Attenborough Blue Planet effect, yeah, around, you know, plastic and single use plastic. So packaging has had a real big spotlight on it. So we have been able to demonstrate how we can create new products. So recently, because of COVID, we were asked to develop um, hand sanitizers for the Scottish government for, for, you know, key workers. But what we did is we developed the hand sanitizers in reusable bottles. So we developed it in the way that Beauty Kitchen would do it. And it was still, you know, a, a, um, a great way to get 
single use plastic out of the air and get reuse into the air. And obviously reuse is a big principle within what Cradle to Cradle stands for. And um, when you start to talk to your customers, particularly about reuse rather than recycle, you are then using some of the comments that, that have been bandied about. Let's be more good than less bad. And I love that because people get that, especially the, you know, the everyday customer like me. It means, all right, OK, so recycling is really just being less bad. Well, I'd rather be more good. So how do I do that? And that's where reuse for us comes in. So we keep our messages fairly straightforward. We talk from the heart. And if someone is on the journey to find more deeper messages, they can definitely find that um, through our website and through, you know, our sort of knowledge hub that we have based on there. Thanks. And uh, Marijn, how do you uh, involve the consumer, educate the consumer, raise awareness with the consumer? And throughout, you know, your almost decade journey, uh, has the receptiveness of consumers changed? I really see the awareness uh, growing uh, over the 11 years that I'm busy with Dopper. Nobody heard about plastic soup in the Netherlands 11 years ago. Now everybody knows also around in the world. Uh, but now uh, awareness is one thing, but also people need to act. And we are still in the, the people that people deny and don't want to react. But there's uh, luckily also more and more people uh, doing it. And that's what you see. Uh, Dopper is on a mission every day and we are working on events every day. Um, one great example where you see that people get involved and want to jump on the train of doing good is the event what we did in uh, in Rio during the Olympic Games. Uh, prior to the Olympic Games, we built um, the Plastic Madonna. We were getting plastic from uh, Copacabana Beach with the people who were there on the Saturday in the afternoon and made it into a huge statue, uh, Madonna, the, the mother of Jesus who was standing uh, on the big rock in, in Brazil. Um, and the metaphor was that uh, Madonna is breastfeeding her baby child, Jesus. Um, and if we keep on polluting our food chain, uh, this small baby Jesus will not be the Jesus which is big uh, on the mountain in Rio. And uh, you saw so much engagement first on the people on the beach, but then the friends of the people on the beach, then uh, by the local government who are cleaning the beach, and then by uh, the, the municipality of, uh, of Rio. And um, we've been asked to uh, not only make this uh, statue, but also to make the Olympic rings. So, uh, of uh, recycled uh, material. Um, so you see the awareness was growing within half a year. Uh, that's really fast uh, because changes can happen and uh, take many years. The plastic water bottle is still in the world. So I really believe and I really see the change that this will be soon uh, or later out of, uh, out of the world with, uh, of course, good alternatives, uh, therefore. Right, and uh, picking up on the theme of uh, behavior change, uh, Timo, uh, so what are really success factors for behavior change? And it's uh, not only important, of course, to change behaviors at consumers, but also in the supply chain, uh, if in particular, you know, the certification is implemented. So can you share a little bit uh, your experiences of uh, the behavior change uh, in your supply chain? Um, when you are implemented or when you innovated for the circular series? No, sure. I mean, we spoke about the consumer before, and that is, of course, a super critical starting point. Once the consumer is asking for something, basically the industry is forced to, to deliver on it. And, and this is happening slowly but surely, more and more, not across the board yet, not in the entire consumer base, but, but we see these, these pockets of, of light there, which is very, very encouraging. But that is really... We spoke about that before, that's the, that's the starting point. Then indeed, there's the supply chain, and of course within the you know, apparel and, and footwear industry, um, there's, there's quite some impact on, on, the, on the supply chain in general, which is the, the challenge, and to, be, to be very honest. But again, the need must be recognized, and that's, that's the starting point for behavioral change, and the consumer ultimately will drive that. We as a brand then, again, pioneering the future, you know, are happy to, to push this and, and try to, to spearhead, you know, new developments and trying to pull the industry, so to speak, with us. And, but it takes an incredible amount of collaboration, you know, inside across departments, but also, you know, outside. And it cannot be done by one brand, one company. It goes, it goes way beyond that. And, 
I mean, we realize you know, it's, um, you know, in, in traditional ways of doing product, you know, a design team doing product, and, and they can't do that alone. You know, circular design requires to go way beyond the normal functional silos, you know, the, you know, uh, aesthetics, shapes, and colors. And I mean, that's not it. It goes into the entire product construction and then into the supply chain, so to speak. So we, we did engage um, in, in innovators, material scientists, designers, and sourcing teams. And, you know, we had a global network of 47 suppliers over the last 14 months within that project to achieve that credit, credit goal. So it's quite some investment and quite some efforts to do that. Or, again, starting with a single jacket, now being the circular series, but it's an incredible amount of effort and work. And, again, with consumers demanding that, we, we believe that will be a, a massive force for change. Um, and we want to encourage you know, other brands to join in and, and ultimately make that the standard for the industry. Great, really taking some leadership here also towards, uh, towards the industry. Um, Joe, you mentioned already retailers and which role do retailers have or can retailers have in driving uh, consumer, consumer behavior change and also uh, purchasing decisions? I mean, they are so important to the changing behaviors of consumers because irrespective of whether people still want to visit shops even though in the current challenges that's not necessarily possible they're still doing direct to consumer you know a lot of retailers have global reach if we think of people like amazon walmart even walgreens boots i'm obviously thinking from my industry in particular and they have a global reach so they have in my opinion, they have a, one, a responsibility, um, but two, they can actually encourage brands to make those changes as well um, by saying, you know, if you have either cradle to cradle certification or other multi attribute certifications that you will be more likely to be, you know, um, sold through our, our distribution network than if you don't have it. And, and obviously we know that's happened recently with Amazon in the US. Um, Walgreens Boots have actually um, put that out as well with regards to cradle to cradle just recently. And I know it's happening, it's starting to happen throughout Europe. And basically you're getting preferred um, you will become a preferred supplier because you're the one that's nudging the dial so for us to already be in that position uh, because we are the people in this room at the moment unfortunately we're still in the minority particularly in the beauty industry um, I, I think it gives me then that first to market advantage which can only be a good thing for my business and that was why I would encourage you know more people to definitely get on um, not, not just you know cradle to cradle definitely but looking just even at the principles to say that you're on the journey you know will definitely help to get more distribution through those retailers and um, not only do the retailers have a responsibility but most retailers have also put out um from a csr perspective so i know that sainsbury's have talked about you know being carbon neutral and, and zero food waste by 2030 which is going to be huge for them to be able to reach so i do think that they are starting to get on um on the journey um, but i think we can do a bit more pushing with that because they're key to changing to making a bigger impact Great, thank you. Yeah, a huge role really retailers can, can play in this uh, consumer behavior change. And uh, Marina, turning to you, shared already a little bit about your consumer engagement strategies, about your, your communication to consumers. But can you summarize for us, uh, you know, we want to reach generations, of course. So what are really the, the secret uh, ingredients or the success, success factors for an impactful uh, product story? Yeah, I think um, uh, my idea was to make a, a beautiful design product. And uh, we are the three of us who are here in this panel. Uh, we are making beautiful products. If you listen to the market what is needed, and then you make something beautiful, what you want to cherish, um, then you can include, uh, yeah, you can reach out easy to the to the generations uh, here. Um, I just uh, opened an office uh, here for our Doppler MPs and other people 
which is uh, COVID-free, by the way. Uh, so I can work here. Uh, but there's also, uh, we are using Interstool as uh, the chairs where we sit on. They are cradle to cradle certified as well. And um, it's a beautiful product. So that's the reason why it's, uh, it's allowed here in our office, because it's a beautiful product. And it's cradle to cradle uh, certified. So that's why you get, uh, you can easily reach out. Dopper is an iconic uh, design. It pops out of the backpacks. So that's where you get easy peop uh, people on your, uh, on your train. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, this is actually what we're doing. We are creating uh, and facilitate movements. So uh, we just created uh, the Dopper Wave and people can really be part of this movement by signing the petition for it and then spread it on their socials and within their friends. So this is the way I think you should uh, and could reach out uh, to your audience. Great, thank you for these practical tips for our audience. Uh, to conclude uh, this session, um, let's uh, project a little bit into the future. So how do you envision the next generation consumer? And what would be the key takeaway messages for the audience? Timo. I go first. Yeah, so um, you know what? Um, next generation consumer is already out there. So, so we're, we're all here, they're all there. So we would like to invite everyone joining us, pioneering the future, so to speak. And uh, yeah, let me think, I mean, don't be afraid. So I message to everyone, don't be afraid of, of changing, you know, how, how we do things or how you do things. It, it is a disruptive time. Be disruptive. You know, it's, it's the time to really be disruptive, not being afraid. Um, it requires bold decisions, though. Um, to build a better future, and, and that has been always true in history. So it's again time now, and the fashion industry needs to choose carefully, as, as, as so do consumers. Um, so I want to encourage everyone, be informed, be aware, uh, be future positive. Thank you, Timo. And uh, Joe, what is your vision for the future consumer and your key messages for the audience today? So, so I think that the future consumer, if I think of my, my daughter and son, they will probably be a little bit embarrassed by what happened in the 80s and the 90s and the, and the, the devastation that potentially we caused. But I think I hopefully will be able to stand up and say, we recognise that and we've done something about it by creating a circular economy with great, beautiful products, yeah, that are accessible and affordable for everyone, yeah, to try and make the difference back into what we've taken from the planet is what I hope. Thank you. That's, that's really also, also our hope here. And uh, Marijn, your vision for the next generation consumer and your key messages for the audience, please. Yeah. So um, I'm uh, doing uh, Dopper now for 10 years. And what I really learned is that consumers are getting more and more informed, which is really, really good. And they really decide by themselves what is good or bad for this world. And I really, I go a lot on stage and I really love the critical questions. And uh, every single consumer should ask this question to themselves and to the business where they're buying some form. Uh, something from. So don't uh, take it for granted what business is presenting to you. Please uh, dive into the product and see what's behind it. And not only the greenwashing, but, but what's behind the greenwashing. Is it real and what they uh, say? Uh, more and more people say no to unhealthy products and choosing uh, products and brands like we are presenting today. Um, and yeah, all together we are creating giant waves of impact. And uh, the current uh, generation really wants and positive change. And there is where I hold on to. Thank you, Timo, Joe and Marijn for being with us today. Very we are now coming to an end of Circular Shift 2020. We hope that you have enjoyed the four episodes. And in case you have missed a live stream, you will find the recordings on our Circular Shift website from tomorrow onwards. Circular Shift, the annual event of the Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute, will return in 2021 from Amsterdam and New York City. We wish you the best and the courage to be the ones who make the circular shift happen. <laughs>